First of all, all Negro peons, get off my damn chat. Bunny hoppers, get off the damn chat. I forgot I had to get you parasites off my feet. All you parasites, get off my damn feet. You Negro peons, you bunny hoppers, you snow puppy lovers, get your ass up off my feet. I'm not talking to you. Get your ass off my life. Get your ass off my life. Ain't nobody talking to you. Damn parasites. You ain't nothing but a community parasite. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to your bunny with the flat booty. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to your bunny with the flat booty. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to the bunny with the flat booty. She ain't got no damn center buns. She ain't got no honey buns. She got a brick wall waiting for your ass, a pale brick wall. But let me stay focused, brothers and sisters. Let me stay focused, Africans. We having a serious conversation. Let me stay focused. You got a pale wall waiting for you, you nasty ass. You got a pale wall. I got voluptuous honey buns, but let me stay focused. Let you let me stay focused, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to figure out why the American African people are more concerned about a presidential election than stopping black on black homicide in our community. I'm trying to figure out why the American African people are more concerned about a presidential election than stopping black on black homicide in our community. If I tuned a three times, I am more concerned, I am concerned about why the American African people from California to Kalamazoo, from Flint, Michigan to Florida, from Detroit to Des Moines, Iowa, I'm trying to figure out while we are more concerned about voting than we are about stopping the homicide crisis in our black community. And do you know what bothers me the most as a social scientist? Do you know what bothers me so much as a social scientist? What I find so egregiously unacceptable as a social scientist? Black people act as if we are not living within the context of black on black genocide. Do you realize we don't even ask the presidential candidates about the violence in our community? We don't even ask the governors about the violence in our community. We don't ask the mayor. We act like black men are not exterminating each other on a daily basis. How did we become so immune to black on black crime? How did we become so immune to the tears of black women, the tears of black mothers? All these black mothers across America have had to bury their sons and their daughters. They've had to mourn in silence because the community doesn't care enough to embrace them. Our black mothers have had to endure the pain of losing their babies and not having a sympathetic community shoulder to cry on. How did we get to the point where black on black homicide is not even a concern for most black people? Let me put this in context. Let me resensitize you to black on black homicide. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. I want you to sit on that for one minute. I want you to sit on that. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. Arabs are not the leading cause of death for Arabs. 
East Indians, Kamala Harris's people, East Indians, Kamala Harris's people, they are not the leading cause of death for themselves. European Jews are not the leading cause of death for European Jews. Anglo-Saxons are not the leading cause of death for Anglo-Saxons. Chinese are not the leading cause of death for China. Black men are the leading cause of death for black men. And the black community is completely silent. Those three black women who sat on the panel in Chicago representing the National Association of Black Journalists, those three black women who sat on that panel in Chicago with Donald Trump representing the National Association of Black Journalists, they didn't ask him a single question about his plans to reduce black on black violence. And let me be clear, Although black on black violence is a black problem, it is completely engineered by the white power structure. Every ingredient that goes into black on black crime is engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The unemployment engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The poverty engineered and introduced by the white power structure. The guns, the weapons engineered and introduced by the white power structure. But our three sisters didn't ask them a single question because black on black fratricide is not a concern for black feminists because they don't care about black men anyway. Black on black homicide is not a concern for black feminists because they don't care about black men anyway. But yet you will turn around and say, we don't have enough black men. We don't have no good black men but you do nothing to save the lives of black boys to make sure your daughters will have good black men. But I digress. But I digress. Let me put black on black homicide in perspective. A black boy in America is 23 times more likely than a white boy to be shot and killed by someone who looks like him. I want to say that one more time. I want to say that one more time. A black boy in America is 23 times more likely to be shot and killed by someone who looks like him than a white boy. 23 more times. Since y'all act like we don't have a black on black crime epidemic. I want to resensitize you because you have been desensitized. And I'm trying to understand how y'all go to church every Sunday. Y'all go to the masjid every Friday. Y'all go to the temples on Sunday claiming to worship God. Oh, yes. I'm talking to all the religions. African spiritualists, you are not exempt. African spiritualists, you are not exempt. My Yoruba devotees, my Igbo devotees, my Lukumi, my Palo, my Santeria, my Voodoo, my Dogon, my Akan, you are not exempt. All black people participate in religious service, claiming to serve God, claiming to worship God, and yet you do nothing in your religious centers to address black on black crime. You go to church every Sunday and y'all don't do nothing in church to address black on black crime. Y'all don't do anything in the Muslim masjids to address black on black crime. You don't do anything in the Jehovah Witness Temple, the Roman Catholic Church, the Ifa, the Elays of Ifa. The Akan, the Dogon, the Voodoo, we don't do nothing. We are a bunch of spiritual hypocrites. Spiritual hypocrites. If your religious center, if your church, your mosque, your Ile is doing nothing to address black on black crime, then we are a bunch of religious hypocrites, spiritual hypocrites. And you wonder why the Almighty does not address our problems. You wonder why the Almighty does not respond to black people's prayers. 
God don't have a reason to listen to us. We are an embarrassment, not just on earth. American Africans are an embarrassment in heaven. I'm going to say it again. And I don't care who don't like it because I am Mr. Unapologetically African. I don't care who don't like it because I am Mr. Unapologetically African. I don't care who don't like it because I'm Mr. Unapologetically African. We are not only an embarrassment on earth, the American African family is an embarrassment in heaven. Your ancestors are embarrassed of you. Your spirit guides are embarrassed of you. The Orisha, the Loa, the Abusum, the Netters of Kemet, they are embarrassed of you. You run around calling yourself a Kemite. You run around calling yourself a Kemite. Our ancient Nile Valley ancestors, they don't recognize you. They don't claim you. You got black boys out here killing each other out of desperation and you calling yourself a spiritual devotee of the Most High. Make it make sense. Truth be told, the African spiritual community is just as hypocritical as the mainstream Muslim and Christian community. I said, truth be told, the African spiritual community is just as hypocritical as the mainstream Muslim and Christian community. Brothers and sisters, I'm speaking for the ancestors. I'm speaking for all of those who have died. We protest whenever the police kill us. Why isn't there a march every time one of us kills us? We protest when the police kills us. Why isn't there a march every time one of us kills us? Because we don't care about black people killing black people. And then we got a dysfunctional, parasitic, gangster rap, hip hop community. And then we have a dysfunctional, parasitic, gangster rap, hip hop community that glamorizes glorifies and popularizes black on black crime. I said it glamorizes, glorifies and popularizes black on black crime. Fake ass hip hop community. These fake ass rappers defending the lyrics in their music that perpetuates and glorifies and glamorizes black on black crime. And when you try to hold them accountable for their lyrics, they say gangster rap is not hip hop. When you try to hold them accountable for their lyrics, they say gangster rap is not hip hop. When you try to hold them accountable for the filth that they purvey in their music, they turn around and say gangster rap is not hip hop. So if gangster rap is not hip hop, if gangster rap is not hip hop, you cowards of the hip hop community, if gangster rap is not hip hop, why is it okay for gangster rap to be hip hop at the BET Awards? Why is it okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop when it's time for the music awards, the Grammy awards, the Soul Train awards? It's okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop any other time of the year. It's okay for gangster rap to be called hip hop any other time of the year until you want to hold hip hop accountable for gangster rap. Then all of a sudden, gangster rap is not hip hop. Then all of a sudden, y'all notice the hypocrisy of the gangster rappers, the hip hop community. Gangster rap is hip hop any other time. Gangster rap is hip hop 364 days out of the year. But so when you say we're going to hold the hip hop community guilty for gangster rap, all of a sudden, gangster rap ain't hip hop no more. Because they don't want to hold the gangster rappers accountable. Even the conscious rappers don't want to hold the gangster rappers re responsible. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not in even black men. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not even black men. Nobody cares about the life of black men, not even black men. Let me get back. So a black boy is 23 times more likely to be murdered by another black boy than a white boy is likely to be murdered by another white child. Let's put gun violence in perspective. Black on black male murder. Black on black male murder. 
black on black male assassination, black on black male execution is so big of a problem. Black on black elimination is so big of a problem. That black on black extermination is, how do I say this correctly? It is 19 times as big of a cause of murder than the next biggest cause of death for black men. I want y'all to understand what I'm saying. Black on black male assassination is 19 times bigger than the next cause of death for black men, which is suicide. I'm going to say this again. I don't think y'all hear me. I'm going to say this again. I need y'all to understand this. Black on black male assassination is the leading cause of death for black men. The second leading cause of death for black men is suicide. Right? But the gap between homicide and suicide, the gap between black on black male homicide and black male suicide, black on black male assassination is 19 times bigger of a problem than the next cause of death, which is suicide. Do y'all understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? And you weren't about Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. How can Donald Trump and Kamala Harris be more important to you than we as a community stopping the violence in our community? How can Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, neither one of them care about black people, neither one of them are a black person. How can that be more important than us stopping our young people from killing our young people? Let me tell you why you could ignore Black children killing black children. You can ignore that. You can ignore black children killing black children and you will go straight to Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Do you want to know why? Most of you have abandoned the black community after you earned your master's degree. You could care less what happens in a black community. Most of you are black bourgeoisies. Petty bourgeoisie middle-class bourgeoisie, upper bourgeoisie, 99% of you Negroes have abandoned the black community and you therefore could care less what happens to your nieces and nephews who still live there. You could care less about what happens to your little brothers and sisters who still live there. You could care less about the children of the people you grew up with who still have to live there. You moved out. That's why y'all don't talk about black on black violence, because most college educated blacks, PWI and HBCU, most college educated blacks, PWI and HBCU, you have moved into a white community or a mixed community. You don't live in a black community, so you don't give a damn about black on black crime because you don't come into the ghetto except to work in the hospitals, except to work in the public schools, except to work in your city job. You don't come into the ghetto no more. You could care less. That's why. Black men, you political cowards. Most of you moved out the community as soon as you could. And you only go back to exploit the athletic ability of young black boys on your football team. Black men only go back to the community to exploit the athletic talent of black boys on your basketball team. Black men only go back to the black community to exploit the black the athletic talent of our black boys. You don't give a damn about the black community. You just need the athletes. You ain't no better than the N NBA, the NFL, or the NCAA. NCAA, National Association of Coons who approximate African athleticism. National Association of Coons who approximate African athleticism for personal benefit. NCAA. I just gave y'all a new name. I just gave y'all a new name. I just gave y'all a new name. 
That's why black on black crime is not a conversation because it doesn't bother the well to do blacks. And the media only puts the well to do blacks on television. The media only puts the well to do blacks on television. The media only puts the well to do blacks on on television. You never hear from the working class blacks and you never hear from the underclass blacks. You never hear from the impoverished black people. That's why black on black crime isn't a mainstream issue because the middle class black America working upper class black America, they could care less. You school teachers don't care. You city workers don't care. You comfortable. You could pay for your kids to go to a private school. That's why y'all support school choice. That's why y'all support school choice. School choice ain't no solution for a single black mother in the hood with four kids. She can't offset the cost of tuition. So what if the school district gives her a couple thousand dollar voucher? So what if the school district gives her a couple thousand dollars voucher to send her kid to a private school? She can't pay the difference in the tuition. You get $5,000 to send your kid to a private school from the Flint schools or the Muskegon schools or the Kalamazoo schools or the Detroit schools or the Inkster schools or the Highland Park schools. They give you a $5,000 voucher, but tuition is $20,000. They give you a $5,000 school choice voucher, but tuition is $20,000. They give you a $5,000 school choice voucher, but tuition is $20,000. How is that a solution for our single black mothers? We don't care about black on black crime. I heard a Negro say Barack Obama gave us health care. Health care. He ain't do nothing about black on black crime. Walk into the ghetto and ask them what the number one problem in the ghetto is. Nobody's going to say health care. Nobody's going to say voter registration fraud. Health care and voter registration fraud are not a top five problem in the black community. Health care and voter registration fraud, that's not a top five problem in the black community. Nobody in the ghettos of Detroit or the ghettos of Baltimore or the ghettos of Oakland or the ghettos of Fort Worth, Texas or the ghettos of Chicago. Nobody in the ghettos of Jackson, Mississippi, the ghettos of Little Rock, Arkansas, the ghettos of Fort Lauderdale, the ghettos of Georgia, the ghettos of Richmond, Virginia, nobody's thinking about no damn voter fraud. You will never hear a black person in the hood talk about some damn voter fraud as a major problem. Voter fraud is a major problem for black bourgeoisie Negroes. Voter fraud is a major problem for black bourgeoisie Negroes. And then when we talk to the politicians about violence in the community, we ask them, what are they going to do to stop the violence? That is not the question you ask a politician. Political science 101. You don't ask the politician, what are you going to do about violence? That's not the question. We're supposed to tell them what to do about violence, not ask them what they're going to do about violence. You're supposed to tell them what they're going to do about violence, not ask them what they're going to do about violence. You're supposed to tell them what to do about violence, not ask them what to do about violence. If you ask them what to do about violence, you know what they're going to give you more white police and more white prisons. If you ask them what they're going to do about violence, they're going to give you more white police and more white prisons. If you ask them what to do about violence, they're going to give you more white police and more white prisons. You don't ask them. You tell them we need industries in the black community. Who's going to tell Kamala Harris we need industries in the black community that hire black men with livable wage jobs and ex-offenders, black men and women with livable wage jobs? We need industries in the black community. When bring a factory to the black community. Bring a factory to the black community. My gangster rappers, let me talk to my gangster rappers. You fake ass hip hop artists who don't do nothing in the black community but give out sneakers and turkeys. Yeah, you Negroes. You Negroes who will cancel Drake but Eminem has full access. Cancel Drake but Eminem got full access. Cancel Drake but Eminem 
is the GOAT. Let me talk to you hypocrites. If there's one thing that perturbs me about the hip hoppers, if it's one thing that perturbs me about the hip hoppers, for all the Gucci and all the Louis and all the Air Jordan and all the Balenciaga and all the designer names that you Negroes parade around on your bodies like cheap slaves. The one thing gangster rap could have done for the black community. The one thing gangster rap could have done for the black community. Why didn't you make Nike build a factory in the black ghettos of America to employ black men? I'm going to say it again. Do you know that our rappers could have got together and made Nike build a factory in the black community to give our people jobs? Do you realize the gangster rappers could have got together and went to Mercedes Benz and BMW? And they could have said, for all the Benzes and Mercedes that we buy from y'all, y'all going to put a Mercedes factory in the black community. Y'all going to put a BMW factory in the black community. All those expensive cars y'all like to drive, the Teslas, make Tesla put a factory in the black community and give our people some jobs. You like Gucci? Make Gucci put a factory in the black community and give us jobs. You like Louis Vuitton? Make Louis Vuitton put a factory in the black community and give us some damn jobs. That's what hip hop could have done for us. That's what hip hop should have done for us. That's what hip hop could have done for us. 50 years and no solutions. 50 years and no institutions. 50 years and no resources. You can go to war for Eminem, but you can't go to war for black boys. You can go to war for DJ Khaled, but you can't go to war for black boys. You can defend culture vulture DJ Vlad, but you can't defend the life of black boys. I didn't ask you what Nike wanted to do with the influence of hip hop in black culture. Black people are the trendsetters. Black people are the trendsetters of the planet Earth. The American African is the trendsetter of the planet Earth. If all the hip hop artists came together and told Nike, you're going to build a factory in the black community or we will never wear another Nike. You're going to open up a Mercedes Benz factory or we will never buy another Mercedes Benz. You're going to open up a Louis Vuitton factory in the black community or we will never buy another Louis Vuitton. I didn't say ask him. I said, tell him, you Negro pen. First of all, all Negro peons, get off my damn chat. Bunny hoppers, get off the damn chat. I forgot I had to get you parasites off my feet. All you parasites, get off my damn feet. You Negro peons, you bunny hoppers, you snow puppy lovers, get your ass up off my feet. I'm not talking to you. Get your ass off my life. Get your ass off my life. Ain't nobody talking to you. Damn parasites. You ain't nothing but a community parasite. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to your bunny with the flat booty. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to your bunny with the flat booty. Get your ass off my feet. Go make love to the bunny with the flat booty. She ain't got no damn center buns. She ain't got no honey buns. She got a brick wall waiting for your ass, a pale brick wall. But let me stay focused, brothers and sisters. Let me stay focused, Africans. We having a serious conversation. Let me stay focused. You got a pale wall waiting for you, you nasty ass. You got a pale wall. I got voluptuous honey buns, but let me stay focused. Let you let me stay focused, brothers and sisters. 
Brothers and sisters, stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused, brothers. Stay focused, brothers. Brothers, higher chakra. We up here today, brothers. Third eye, crown chakra. Third eye, crown chakra, voice chakra. We up here, brothers. Top three chakras. Throat, third eye, crown. So like I said, the reason black on black crime doesn't get the attention that it needs. The reason black on black crime doesn't get the attention that it needs is educated blacks have abandoned their community for a white suburb. It's not their problem anymore. It's not their problem anymore. It's not their problem anymore. Let me compare this black on black crime thing a little bit more. Let me compare this black on black crime thing a little bit more. 77% of white gun violence is homicide. Listen to me. I'm teaching family. 77% of white gun violence is suicide. 77% of white gun violence is suicide. Most of the time when white people are shooting white people, they are killing themselves. Most of the time when white people are shooting white people, they're killing themselves. 77% of white gun violence is suicide. Now let's, that, let's compare that to us. Now let's compare that to us. 77% of white gun violence is suicide. 82% of black gun violence is homicide. As violent as white people are, as violent as the Caucasian can be, as violent as the Neanderthal nation can be, most of their violence is self-inflicted. Most white violence is self-inflicted. 77% of white gun violence is suicide. 82% of black gun violence is homicide. Do y'all see how bad this is? Do y'all see how bad this is? And some of y'all going to say, ain't nothing I can do about grown men killing grown men. Okay. Well, guess what? Most black on black homicide, most black on black Homicide is black men under the age of 30. These are our babies. Most black on black homicide is age 20 to 29. What about the teenage black boys killing themselves? How are we going to have black on black love if we ain't got no black men to love our sisters? How are we going to have black on black love if we ain't got no black men to love our sisters? How are we going to talk about black on black love when we ain't got no black men to love our sisters? You don't ask politicians what they're going to do. You tell them, we don't need more police. There is no evidence. There is no research. There is no proof. There is no evidence. There is no research. There is no proof that more police and more prisons reduce crime. There is no proof no evidence, no research that proves more police and more prisons reduce crime. So, Dr. Umar, if that is true, why do they keep on giving us more police and more prisons to give white people more jobs? They're using black on black crime to give white people an economic stimulus package. That's why. And none of your politicians don't do anything about it. They use black on black crime to improve the economy of the white suburbs. They give more jobs to white cops and they create more prisons and give more jobs to white people in the name of black on black crime. And don't none of your elected officials say anything about it. 
It costs more to incarcerate a black person than to give them a job. It costs more to incarcerate a black person than to give them a job. It costs more to incarcerate a black person than to give them a job. You say, well, if it costs more to lock us up than to give us a job, why not give us a job? Because they're trying to exterminate you. That's why. The American dream is not a big house. The American dream is not a PhD. An American dream is not a Mercedes Benz. The American dream is not a beautiful family. The American dream is to go outside and not see a single Negro in sight. That is the American dream. And what you black people have failed to understand these 159 years since the 13th Amendment, and the one thing you black people have failed to understand for these 159 years since the 13th Amendment and what you black people have failed to understand these 159 years since the 13th Amendment, America has been working towards the American dream. The government has been working towards the American dream. Your presidents and your Congress and your Supreme Court have been working towards the American dream. And what is the American dream? An America without black people. The American dream is an America without black people. The American dream is an American, an America without black people. This is genocide. We are living in the midst of genocide. And y'all worrying about who you going to vote for president. They're not going to do nothing about black on black crime, but send more police in to kill more black people. You don't ask people who don't care about your children to stop the problems of your children. That's like we go to the public schools and we tell the white teachers, can you please stop miseducating our children? Are you crazy? We don't love your kids and you know we don't love your kids and you still send your kids to our schools. We don't love your kids and you know we don't love your kids, but you're too lazy to use your own money to organize your community and educate your own children. We are the laughing stock of the United States. We are the laughing stock of the United States. Don't you find it interesting? Don't you find it interesting that when political candidates want the black vote, they don't come and talk to you. They don't come and negotiate with you. They don't come and reason you when a politician wants the black vote. They don't come and talk to you. They don't come and listen to you. They don't come in. Kamala Harris hasn't scheduled any listening sessions with the black community. Donald Trump hasn't scheduled any listening sessions with the black community. When they want the black vote, they send Meg Thee Stallion in to shake her ass. And I love my sister. I love my sister. I love my sister Meg Thee Stallion. No disrespect. I'm just using her as an example. When you want the black vote, you don't talk to them. Entertain them. They don't think. Black people want to be entertained. If you want the black vote, go send Meg Thee Stallion in and let her entertain them. Black people don't need to be talked to. Black people don't need to be negotiated with. Black people don't need to be listened to. Black people don't need to be reasoned. Send some rappers in to entertain them. You have to entertain the black vote out of the Negro community. You have to entertain the black vote out of the Negro community. You have to entertain the black vote out of the Negro community. Let me give you a comparative example. Let me get peace and pan-Africanism. I'm on my Instagram live. I'll call you back when I'm done. Could you imagine if Kamala Harris... Could you imagine if Kamala Harris wanted the Chinese vote? And she showed up in Chinatown with a bunch of Chinese rappers rapping for the Chinese community to get the Chinese vote. Do you think she would get the Chinese vote after that? Do you think she would get the Chinese vote after that? If Kamala Harris wanted the Arab vote, what if she showed up with a bunch of Arabic musicians in Dearborn, Michigan? Kamala Harris is going to show up in Dearborn, Michigan with a bunch of Arabic rappers. Do you think she's going to get the vote after that? That would be considered an extreme insult. 
that would be considered an extreme act of disrespect for every community except black people. We have an anti-Asian hate bill. We got an anti-LGBT bill. We got a Native American bill. We got an immigrant bill. But you know what we're going to do for black people? We're going to give them a Juneteenth cookout on the White House lawn. We're going to give black people a Juneteenth cookout on the White House lawn. Joe Biden, a Juneteenth cookout on the White That's what you do with black people. Parties and bullshit. That's all they care about. Parties and bullshit. That's all they care about. Parties and bullshit. That's all they care about. And then after they gave you a Juneteenth cookout on the White House lawn, they gave you a 50 years of hip hop destruction cookout at Kamala Harris's house. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. Kamala Harris threw y'all a 50 years of hip hop destruction cookout at her house with her snow puppy. That's what she did for y'all. And this is the woman you're going to vote in. She didn't pass no laws. She didn't drop off no resources. She didn't build no institutions or industries in the black community. Oh, we need black jobs. But somebody needs to go ask orange man Donald Trump. Somebody needs to go ask Agent Orange, Donald Trump. Somebody needs to go ask Agent Orange since you talked about black jobs. See, this is how you're supposed to conduct your politics. Go back to Donald Trump and say, since you talked about black jobs and you are a businessman yourself, you come from corporate America, Donald Trump, since you brought up black jobs, how many industries... Are you going to build inside the black community? That's what we should have. My sisters on the National Association of Black Journalism couch. Let me tell you where you three sisters messed up besides wearing red, white and blue. Let me tell you where you three sisters messed up the other day besides wearing red, white and blue. Let me tell you where you three sisters messed up the other day. You only put that panel together to try to embarrass and chastise Donald Trump. You did not put that panel together to try to get some concessions out of him. So you wasted the whole panel because that was a pro Kamala Harris panel whose job was to make Donald Trump look bad. You can't afford to choose sides between two enemies. You can't afford to choose sides between two enemies. You can't afford to choose sides between two enemies. What you should have said was, since you brought up black jobs in your debate with Joe Biden. What you should have said was, since you brought up black jobs with Joe Biden. We of the American African community need to know how many industries are you going to build in black? If Donald Trump got on the news right now and said, I promise to build five factories that can employ at least 500 American Africans in five major black cities, I would vote for him. If Kamala Harris got on the news and said, I will build five industries in five major black cities to give jobs only to black people. And I'm, I'm going to stop gentrification. I'm going to stop gentrification so those jobs don't end up going to non-black people. If either one of them promise me that, I might vote November 5th. I might vote November 5th. I might vote November 5th, but guess what? They ain't building no industries for us because they trying to exterminate us. They ain't got to build no industries for us because they know we're not going to organize and make them build any industries for us. Where is the Congressional Black Caucus? Mighty quiet right now. I'm telling you right now, if I catch a Negro campaigning for Kamala or Donald, and you ain't got a list of concessions, you better have a list of concessions on paper that better include industries. It better include industries. 
It better include economic investment in black business. It better include criminal justice reform. It better include mass educational reform. Or oh, we going to boo you. We might got to have a couple boo parties. Brothers and sisters, are y'all ready to show up and show out? We may have to boo some of these gatekeepers. We may have to show up and boo some of these gatekeepers. We're not going to let you come to the black community and exploit the poor, uneducated black vote and our people don't get nothing. We're not going to let y'all do that. We not going to, since y'all want to be gatekeepers for the white power structure, I'm going to be a gatekeeper for poor, underclass black America. That's right. Now, we got our own gatekeepers now. The ghetto, I'm a ghetto gatekeeper. I'm going to protect my people from being exploited. I am a ghetto political gatekeeper. I'm going to stop my people from being exploited by black bourgeoisies who want to give black people false hope to help one of these enemies get elected to the White House. Melanin drip, melanin drip. Let me check in with my Ifa Tunde queen. And where my queens at? Ladies, are you there? Butter almond, are you there? Butter pecan, are you there? Warm peanut butter, are you there? Smooth cinnamon, are you there? My milky nutmeg sisters, are my fudge sisters there? My African pina coladas, are you there? My warm walnut, my smooth chestnut queens, my brown sugar queens, my light brown sugar, my dark brown sugar, my medium brown sugar queens. Where my natural hair queens at? Are we got, are my happy to be nappy queens in the building? Are my happy to be nappy queens in the building? I just gotta check. I love my sisters. I love you ladies. I'm always gonna defend my sisters. Oh yes. Beta males, control your coon chip. Beta males, con control your coon chip right now. Beta males, relax. Beta males. When you serve the people, you too will get love from the queendom. When you serve the people, you too will get love for the queendom. When you serve the people. Oh yes, I'm going to take more pictures today. Eastern Michigan University, Honors College, 3 o'clock today. Black Consciousness Conference, Saturday, August 3rd, Edward Wilmot Biden, Solar Return. I'm going to take more pictures today. I love posting pictures with my beautiful African sisters. I love posting pictures with my beautiful, oh yes. I hope I get my passport so I can go see my beautiful London Queens. Where my London Queens at? Where my Brixton Queens of the United Kingdom at? Where my Wolverhampton Queens and my Luton Queens and my Manchester Queens of England at? Where my Irish queens at? Oh, yes. Where my Scottish African queens? Oh, yes. Where my Costa Rica queens? Where my Honduras queens? Where my Panamanian queens? Where my Brazilian queens? Where my Jamaican queens and my Turks and Caicos queens and my Bahamian queens? And where my Texas queens? Where my Michigan queens? Where my Florida queens? Where my California queens? Where my D.C. queens? Where my Maryland queens? Where my Connecticut queens? Where my Rhode Island queens at? Where my Omaha, Nebraska queens? Where my Twin Cities, Minneapolis, and St. Paul queens? Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. We have to get back on the Garvey train because we are losing. We have to get back on the Garvey train because we are losing. We have to get back on the Garvey train because we are losing. Listen, y'all. Black on black crime is purging the black men, purging the black community of black men. We need industries. We need an overhaul of the education system. Two things for Kamala and Donald. When y'all talk to Kamala and Donald, your governor candidates, your senatorial candidates, your state legislature candidates, institutions, Industries and education. That's it. Build some industries with livable wage jobs. Build some industries with livable wage jobs and overhaul the school system. That's all we need. 
jobs and schools, better jobs and better schools. That's all we need. Let me ask y'all a question. 1968, a few months before Dr. King was assassinated. In 1968, a few months before Dr. King was assassinated, Lyndon Baines Johnson's Kerner Commission put out a study on the causes of the race riots of 1967. They put out a study on the causes of the race riots of 1967. Tomorrow morning is new moon in Leo. Where are my Leos at? Where my Leos at? Brother Leos, sister Leos, elderly, where my Leos at? Tomorrow is new moon in Leo. All Leos, make sure you wake up and meditate during the new moon. Don't sleep on the new moon tomorrow, Leos. We are ruled by the sun. We are the center of existence. Tomorrow is a new moon in Leo. 7 a.m., 7, 10 a.m., I believe. Eastern Standard Time. So if you were in California, you got to get up at four o'clock in the morning. My California Leos, my Texas Leos, my Minneapolis Leos, my Omaha Leos, you got to get up at 6 a.m. And my East Coast Leos, you got to get up at 7 a.m. Make sure you meditate for African liberation and into black crime and into black femicide and into sexual trafficking. Re-emergence of self-respect, re-emergence of solidarity, re-emergence of organization, liberation for our mother continent of Africa, because no matter how much we struggle in America, we can't forget Africa. No matter how much we fight in America, we can't forget Africa. Africa is the motherland. It is the mother continent. She is the queen mother of us all. As she goes, so goes the rest of us. As Africa goes, so goes the rest of us. Pretendians, hop off the feed right now. Pretendians, hop off the feed right now. Pretendians hop off the feed right now. Brothers and sisters, in 1967, the Kerner Commission released a report on the causes of the 1967 race riots. In 1967, America had more than 100 race riots. This is before they murdered Dr. King. This is before they murdered Dr. King. America had more than 100 race riots. Lyndon Baines Johnson put together a commission to study the causes of the race riots. That commission published a report called the Kerner Commission. You need to read it. Everybody go to Barnes and Noble. Go because the black bookstores don't have it. Go to Barnes and Noble and get you a copy of the Kerner Com Black bookstores. Make sure you order a couple copies of the Kerner Commission. All black bookstores, you are being given an order by the Minister of Education of the African Race, Ifa Tunde Oguntade. All black bookstores, you are being given an order from your Minister of Education, Dr. Ifa Tunde Oguntade. You must order 12 copies of the Kerner Commission because I want every black person in America to order the Kerner Commission and read it. Do you know what the two biggest recommendations in the Kerner Commission was? Do you know what the two biggest okay. Do you know what the two biggest recommendations in the Kerner Commission was? Reverend Al Sharpton started a live feed. Okay. Okay. We might need a Dr. Umar Al Sharpton debate. You know what? If Al Sharpton is running around caping for Kamala, I might challenge him to a debate. I might have to challenge Reverend Al Sharpton to a debate. What do y'all think about that, brothers and sisters? What do y'all think about the Reverend Al Sharpton going head to head with the King Kong of consciousness on whether or not the Democratic Party is a friend of black America? What do y'all think about an Al Sharpton, Dr. Umar debate? Would that break the airwaves? Would that break YouTube? Would that break Instagram, Twitter, HBO, BET, CBS, Fox. What do y'all think about it? Ifa Tunde versus Al Sharpton is the Democratic Party the friend of black America. What do y'all think about that? Al Sharpton, I know you like money, my elder. Al Sharpton, I know you like money. You make about $3 million a year off the people. How about we go head to head? How about we go head to head? 
And I'm going to talk about your eight years of meeting with President Obama and you didn't get one thing for black America. Al Sharpton, my first question to you, you met with the president of the United States more than any other black leader. Put that in quotes. Any other black leader. Put that in quotes. You met with the president of the United States more than any black leader ever met with a president. Did y'all know Al Sharpton met with Barack Obama more than Dr. King met with Kennedy and Lyndon Baines Johnson put together? Did y'all know Al Sharpton met with President Barack Obama more times than Dr. King met with President Kennedy and Lyndon Baines Johnson put together? Dr. King came back with a voting rights act. Dr. King came back with a civil rights bill. What did Al Sharpton come back with from Barack Obama? Dr. King came back with a civil rights bill. Dr. King came back with a voting rights act. What did Al Sharpton come back with? No, y'all want me to debate struggle streamers. If you want me to debate a YouTubian struggle streamer, that's going to be $30,000. You will not reduce me. I am a man with credentials. I am a scholar. I have done research. I have six degrees. I'm the most requested, the most revered, the most loved, and the most hated black scholar on the planet. You will not reduce me to a debate with a struggle streamer. If you want me to debate a YouTubian struggle streamer, that will cost you $30,000. Half of that money will go to the FDMG Academy. Half of that money will go to fund my other projects. I'll debate anybody you want if you got $30,000. You will not reduce me to a struggle streamer. Ah, woo. Ah, woo. So, the Kerner Commission of 1967. The Kerner Commission of 1967 gave the President of the United States two major recommendations. Two major recommendations. Do you know what they recommended? What were the two major recommendations of the 1967 Kerner Commission. Jobs, better jobs and better schools. Did y'all hear what I just said? Better jobs, better schools. A third one was better justice. Schools, jobs, and justice. What are the three biggest problems in black America right now? Schools, jobs, and justice. 1967. We still got the same problems. 77, 87, 97, 07, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2. That's 55, 3, 4. 57 years later. 57 years later, you still got the same problems that the Kerner Commission told Lyndon Baines Johnson to fix. He said, if you want to fix black America, they need better jobs, better schools and better justice, better criminal justice, better constitutional justice, better procedural. And y'all want to vote again. 14 elections since the Kerner Commission and y'all want to keep on voting. Go ahead. I will never tell you not to vote. I will never tell you not to vote. I wouldn't do that. I would never tell you not to vote. But the definition of insanity, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over. Melanin drip. The sun is shining right on me. I say, let me get the third eye activation. You got to blink at the sun a few times to get your third eye activation. Melanin drip. What's my complexion, ladies? I'm talking to the Ifa Tunde Queendom. Brothers, if you answer the question, you will be blocked. 
brothers, if you act, answer the question, you will be blocked because brothers shouldn't be uh, determining what another brother's complexion is. Ladies, what is my complexion? Am I dark cinnamon? Am I light chocolate? Am I dark walnut? Ladies, what complexion is mine? My melanin drip is what complexion, ladies? I'm talking to the queens right now. What is my complexion, ladies? What's my complexion, ladies? I'm talking to the queendom. Well, what is Dr. Umar's complexion under the sun? Talk to me, queen. What, what is, that? is that? Is that dark cinnamon? Is that light chocolate? Talk to me, ladies. Ain't no sisters giving me no complex. Spicy chocolate. I like that. She says spicy chocolate. The spicy is a little beta male. I don't like that word spike. Milky smooth. Milky smooth chocolate. Okay. So I'm going to take my milky smooth spicy chocolate and let me marry it to your butter almond. Let me marry it to your butter scotch. Let me marry it to your warm peanut butter. Let me marry it to your sweet brown sugar. Let me marry it to your dark brown sugar. Let me marry it to your sunflower honey complex. That honeycomb complex. The honeycomb colored sister. The cherry wood sisters. Oh, yes. The African vanilla queens. Oh, yes. Let us focus, brothers and sisters. We must stay focused. We must stay focused. Hit the cash app. Hit the cash app. Dallas sign FDMG school. Hit the cash. We're going to have at we're going to have the conscious singles convention is coming, brothers and sisters. I hope some of my London family could come to the conscious singles convention. I hope some of my continental African family can come. Pecan. Oh, candy pecan. Woo. Ain't nothing like a candy pecan system. Lord have mercy with extra curves. I get my cheese steak. They say, what you want on your cheese steak? I need mushrooms, sweet peppers, fried onions on my cheese steak, Philly cheese steak, mushrooms, sweet peppers, fried Detroit. Do y'all have a Philly cheese steak spot in Detroit? Where the, where the Detroit cheese steaks at? Who make the best cheese steaks in Detroit, Flint, Highland Park, Inkster, Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti? Who got the best cheese steaks up here, Detroit family? Michigan family, who got the best cheese steaks? I want. I never had a cheese steak in Michigan. I never had a cheese steak in Michigan. Who got? But when I order my cheese steak in Philly, I get fried onions, mushrooms, sweet peppers, extra mayo, ketchup, and just a dash, just a dash of pepper. That's how I order my cheese steak: extra mayo, ketchup, fried onions. Sweet peppers, mushrooms, and just a dash of pepper. Now, when I order my queens, I'm just joking, ladies. I'm just joking. But when I order my queen, I'm just joking, ladies. I need, I need a nice cinnamon or chocolate or butter pecan or butterscotch or peanut butter or African vanilla queen with extra nappy hair. Extra curves. Let me stop. Stay focused, family. Stay focused, family. Extra curves. Stay focused, family. Stay focused. We losing focus. We losing for brothers. Uh, extra cinnamon with extra curves and extra natural hair. <laughs> extra cinnamon with extra curves. Extra butterscotch with extra curves. Extra fudge with extra curves. Extra African lemonade with extra curves. This is Black August. And I'm the king of Black August. I might be the prince of Pan-Africanism. But I'm the king of Black August. Who coming to Nat Turner land August the 21st? Who coming to Nat Turner land August the 21st? Extra melanin, extra curve. Who coming to? No, but I love the queens of all complexion. It don't make a difference to me. She could be lemonade. She could be African vanilla. She could be a mixed race African queen. Sometimes you want a scoop of chocolate in a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Sometimes you want a scoop of chocolate in a scoop of vanilla on your on your Sunday. Your, 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 your banana boat. Sometimes you need a scoop of chocolate and a scoop of lemonade on that banana boat. I take every flavor. I love all the African queens from the mixed race 
to the most mixed race queen to the darkest, deepest, chocolatiest African queen out there. I love them all, sisters. From the lightest mixed race queen to the darkest chocolate, give me all of them. Just give me a buffet. Can I please have a buffet of African queen flavors? There we go. Just give me a buffet. Give me a sample. I want to go to an all you can eat with African flavors of the, oh Lord, have I want to go to a buffet. Can we do an all you can eat African Queendom buffet for the Prince of Pan-African. I wanted the lemon cookies and the, and, 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 and the butterscotch cookies, the almond cookies, the caramel cookies, the nutmeg, the brown sugar. Ladies, we must stay focused, ladies. We must stay focused, ladies. We must, we must. This is Black August. We have to organize the community. We must stay focused. You called me out, your, out my name, so I got to block you, my brother. I got to block you. Mm. You said you want to, can we stay focused and still eat? No. We got to build, brothers. We got to build for the queens. The black woman is too valuable. The black woman is too valuable. The black woman is too valuable to be disseminating her gifts to black men who do not earn them. I'm gonna say it again, brothers. I know you don't wanna hear this, my African kings. I know you don't wanna hear this, my African kings, but I got to say it. The black woman is too valuable. What is between her legs and what is between her breasts, I mean her heart. What is between her legs and what is between her breasts, I mean her heart. What is between her legs and what is between her breasts, I mean her heart, is too valuable. It is too sacred to be given to black men who don't deserve it and don't value it. There is no price you can put on the black woman's heart. There is no price you can put on the black woman's yoni verse. Because the black woman's yoni verse is the greatest gift a black man can have in this universe. After the grace of the almighty, after the grace of the almighty himself, the greatest gift a black man can have in the universe is a black woman's yoni verse. And we have to earn that, my brothers, by building up the community. Now, when I speak in support of my sisters, weak black men like to name call. And this is what I'm going to say to you. It ain't my fault that you are suffering from no yoni withdrawal. Some of y'all hate black women because you've never been blessed with the pearls of the universe. That's not my fault. If you stop worrying about me, stop worrying about other black men, stop competing and comparing yourself to other black men and step your game up politically, step your game up spiritually. Reinvent your African manhood. Reinvent yourself. And one of my beautiful African sisters, if you act right and treat her like the goddess she is, you might get blessed with a pearl or two. She might let you swim in the ocean and find you a pearl or two. You might come out of them waters with a diamond or two. But you ninjas can't even get near the ocean. She won't even let you put your toes in the water. She won't even let you put your fingers in the water. She won't even let you put your face in the water. Brothers and sisters, the most important thing we can do right now, the most important Hold them pearls for me, Kate. Hold the pearls right now, baby. I'm not, I'm not looking for no pearls right now. 
I'm getting ready for the conference today. Hold your pearls, my sister. Hold them pearls. Hold them now. Hold them pearls right. Keep them pearls for right now. Hold them on. Hold them. Hold the pearls for me, baby. Hold them pearls right now. Don't get them pearls to nobody. Hold them pearls for right now. Hold them pearls. Okay, hold the pearls. All right, queens. I appreciate y'all offering me some pearls. Hold them pearls. Just hold them for right now. Hold them pearls right now. Okay. But this is what I want to say in conclusion. In conclusion. Because I have to get on the radio in Cleveland. I'm going to be on News Talk 1490 Cleveland. Where are my Cleveland, Ohio Africans at? Where are my Cleveland, Ohio Africans at? Where are my Cleveland, Ohio Africans at? I'm going to be on 1490 News Talk. 1490 News Talk, I think it's AM or FM, 1490 News Talk at 1045 this morning. So I need to hop off of here. And then I'm going to go out and get me some lunch. Any black owned restaurants in Ypsilanti? Any black owned restaurants in Ann Arbor? Dallas, Texas, October 12th. Dallas, Texas, October 12th. News Talk Cleveland 1490. Google it. News Talk 1490 Cleveland. Here's what I want to say in conclusion. Here's what I want to say in Cleveland. Excuse me. Here's what I want to say in conclusion. Here's what I want to say in conclusion. The most important thing we can do as American Africans is not vote. It is to organize. I didn't say don't vote. Listen to what I said. The most important thing we can do is not voting. It is organizing. No presidential candidate is going to stop black on black crime. No presidential candidate is going to build industries unless we organize and force them. We got to build our own schools, our own hospitals, our own supermarkets, our own banks, our own distribution, our own manufacturing, brothers and sisters. I believe in us. I believe in my black brothers and I believe in my black sisters and I believe in the black youth and I believe in the black elders. I'm not waiting for no election. We have 14 elections since Dr. King and nobody has given us any industries. Nobody has fixed the schools. Nobody has given us justice. 14 presidential elections since 1968. What we waiting for? What are you expecting to get from the East Indian or the orange man? What are you expecting to get from the East Indian or the orange man? We must organize if we want to survive. I was at Queen Mother Harriet Tubman statue yesterday here in Ypsilanti. I went on an underground railroad tour here in Ypsilanti. Thank you to the queen mother who took me on the underground railroad tour. She took me to the graves of the soldiers who fought in the Civil War. Black men, U.S. colored troops. She took me to the Harriet Tubman statue. She took me to the AME church where they used to harbor our runaway Africans on the underground railroad. Michigan was the last stop before they crossed over to Canada. I said Michigan was the last stop before they crossed over to Canada. I said Michigan was the last stop. Sister, if you want to vote for Kamala Harris, vote for Kamala Harris. I still love you. 
I didn't tell you not to vote for the East Indian candidate. I just said that you're not going to get anything unless we organize our black votes into one vote. All black votes must become one vote. Until all black votes become one vote, we will never be able to hold anybody accountable. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Brothers and sisters, did you enjoy today's seminar? Was this helpful to you? Yes or no? Why are you acting like her father wasn't black? I talked about this on yesterday's live, my Negro P and beta male. I talked about this on yesterday's live, my Negro P and beta male. And if you follow my work, my Negro P and beta male, you would know that Dr. Umar has a two pronged test for considering who's African and who is not. Dr. Umar has a two pronged test for considering who is African and who is not. Dr. Umar has a two pronged test for considering who is African and who is not. Number one, you must be psycho, excuse me, biologically African. You must be biologically African. Kamala Harris is a quadroon. She has a single African grandparent. Kamala Harris is a quadroon. She has a single African grandparent. Now, many Africans would cancel her out because they don't consider quadroons to be Africans. I do consider quadroons to be biologically African. I do consider quadroons to be biologically African. I do consider quadroons to be biologically African. Okay, so she passed the first question. Now, Kamala Harris has to pass the second question. The second question do you psychologically identify as an African on a full-time basis? Does Kamala Harris psychologically identify as an African on a full-time basis? And to this question, the answer is no. I have seen her called a South Asian too many times without her ever correcting the interviewer to clarify that I am South Asian and Jamaican American. I am South Asian and Jamaican African. I am South Asian and American African. I never heard Kamala Harris correct anybody who called her South Asian or called her Indian. Never. I have no proof that her father identified as an African either. He was a mixed race East Indian African. Her father was a mixed race Jamaican East Indian African. All due respect to him. No disrespect to the man. I want to be clear. But I don't have any proof that her father ever identified unapologetically as an African. And I have no proof she ever identified on a full time basis as an African. My rules are the same. It's the same rules for Amber Rose. It's the same rules for Drake. It's the same rules for Kamala Harris. It's the same rules for you. I don't consider Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas an African. He's biologically black. But he ain't psychologically black. Clarence Thomas don't identify with us. He identifies with the white power structure. So he is not accepted as an African in my book. Ifa Tunde's Rules of Existence. I'm going to come out with a book. Soon when I finish my For Sisters Only book. Soon when I finish my For Sisters Only book, The Rules for Romance. And I'm going to go on a For Sisters Only tour. Who's coming to Dr. Umar's For Sisters Only tour? Who, where my sister's at? I need a spot in London. I need a spot in Australia. I need a spot in Paris. I need a spot in Sweden, Stockholm, Norway, Jamaica, Brazil, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Oakland, Portland, Seattle. I'm okay, man. No, thank you. All right, now. Housekeeping, fam. I don't need no service. Nothing in there needs to be cleaned. Nothing needs to be changed because I'm on my meditation vibe. I'm not involved in any type of unholy activities. Consciousness over the cookies. Politics over the Buddha. Revolution. So brothers and sisters. We got to get deeper. 
We got to get deeper. We got to get more serious, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to hop off right now because I got to get on News Talk 1490 Cleveland. I got to get on News Talk 1490 Cleveland. I got to get on News Talk 1490 Cleveland. And tomorrow at 12 noon, I will be on Philadelphia Radio, WURD 900 AM. WURD 900 AM Philadelphia tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in 1490 News Talk Cleveland today at 1045 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858. Make sure you join my mailing list. Go to my bio on Twitter. Go to my bio on Instagram. Go to my bio on TikTok. Go to my bio on Facebook. Click on the bio. Click on mailing lists. I'm going to start sending you guys an email blast, a monthly email blast. If you're not signed up, you're not going to know what's going on with the Prince and FDMG. Once the school has received a certificate of occupancy, we will be holding office hours. You can start to meet with me privately. The sessions will be videotaped. Ladies, you will be videotaped. I cannot meet with any sisters privately without video because the Me Too and the Me Three and the Me Four and the Me Five movement is in full swing and some of you sisters ain't no damn good. Some of you sisters are looking for a scandal on King Kong. Y'all don't care that I'm the main one out here saving our kids. Y'all don't care I'm the only one in the conscious community building relevant institutions. Y'all don't care that I'm raising the consciousness and organizing and unifying African people. Y'all will do the slave master's bidding and y'all will try to get me on a Me Too and a Me Three. So ladies, if you come for an appointment at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy to meet with me, the sessions will be videotaped. We cannot meet without a videotape. We cannot meet, ladies, without a videotape because I got to protect myself and some sisters, just like some brothers, ain't nothing but the devil. As grandmama would say, rest in peace. As my grandmamas would say, some black women, just like some black men, ain't nothing but the devil. Join me Tuesday, Boonell, Florida, Kim C. Hammond Criminal Justice Center, 10, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to fly in Monday night. I'll be in Boonell, Florida, Monday night. If anybody want to get a grub, go to the restaurant, get a grub. Jacksonville, I might do Jacksonville, Boonell. We're going to go support our brother, Brendan Depper. Then I'm going to fly right back to Philly, try to get my passport. Fly right back to Philly and try to get my passport so I could be on that flight to London, England. Where my London Africans at? Where my British Africans at? Where my United Kingdom Africans at? Where my Europe Africans? I want to be with y'all. They holding up the passport. They trying to make me a political prisoner without conviction. They trying to make me a political. They doing me like they did the most honorable Marcus Garvey brothers and sisters. So I'm about to tap on out. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. If you enjoyed today's message, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. If you enjoyed today's message, hit your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. This is your brother, King Kong, Black August Leo season. Tomorrow is the new moon in Leo. Make sure you meditate, King Kong.